r slash credit. What is one secret your parents can never know? This is fairly dark. When I had just went off to college, I was involved in some activity that was pretty not good. I had started writing college papers, especially for the remedial English and foreign language students for cash. I didn't really need the cash, but I was just really good at it. At one point, one of my customers couldn't pay, so I arranged for him to pay me in sexual favors. At the time I was really only interested in it because it was a power play, or so I thought, but eventually it became a primary way of getting paid slash laid. I really got off on it. It didn't occur to me until much later that this was essentially me being gay and having a messed up way of dealing with it. Anyways. Papers for blowjobs, usually from straight guys or guys looking to pass and often from desperate students looking to avoid being flunked out and then returning home. I got a fair number from cute girls as well. I remember around midterms of my second semester of freshman year I wrote about 40 papers. I was getting blown two or three times a day for weeks, depending on the work level, it was two or three blows. A few of the girls I fucked proper. Of course, I ended up getting caught when the girlfriend of a customer slash blower went to the dean for academics and blew the door off of the closet. Being a good entrepreneur, I had a ledger, records, customer service notes, writing samples from the students that had ordered papers, estimated grades and actual grades, you know, to improve my product. Also, some recordings of my better payments being received. I was of course instantly expelled. I didn't tell my parents. Instead, I moved in with some people from Craigslist near campus. That next semester I worked on getting myself in shape, I worked a lot doing temp jobs and doing some straight up legit paper writing and eventually saved up enough money to travel south of the US border, assume a fake identity and smuggle myself into the US under a false name. I do not happen to be Hispanic and I don't speak Spanish. I established myself for the rest of the next semester in town under my fake identity and then I applied to the same school and was accepted on the spot after an in-person interview. I got a new student ID which helped me get a new license. I changed departments and went into a new major. Everything went normally after that. I continued going to school and was given a full scholarship under my fake identity. I occasionally ran into people I knew from my first go around. I told them I was allowed back in probation, but then avoided them. It got really dicey during graduation. I had started to change my fake identity so that I could pass between my real name and the fake one using a shared nickname. When the time for commencement came, there was a form to write phonetically how to say your name. I used the nickname and then mutated the last name so that I could sort of blame the speaker to both my friends who only knew my fake name and my parents and family who were in the audience. I got my diploma and graduated. About a year after I graduated, I forged some paperwork to show a legal name change from my fake identity to my real name. I filed it with a school, paid a fee, and got a new diploma in my new name. I told the registrar that I had been illegal when I was the school and she was really caring and understanding. I told her now that I had gotten my residency I could use my proper name and date of birth. She had to fiddle with the computer, probably to erase the old me, and eventually she got it to stick. A month or so later, I called someone else and added Mari Less S into my record so that I could be verified using the automated credential verification service. TLDR. Got expelled, assumed fake identity, merged them back into one. It's been 15 years and I seem to be in the clear. My cousin and I had sexual relations. More than once. Edit, since it seems like there is interest, I will tell my story once I get home in a few hours. Been busy at work and haven't had much time to read it. Edit hash 2, the story. It all started when we were in our mid-teens and would carry on every summer for the next few years. My mom, dad and I were the only part of the family who lived in Alberta, the rest of them were in BC. So every summer we'd pack up and head west for vacation. Sometimes it would be camping, other times we'd stay in a hotel, but we always made sure to visit the extended family. One year, when I was around 15, we ended up staying for a couple weeks on Vancouver Island, which is where most of my dad's family lives. My aunt and uncle, my dad's brother and his wife, 
had a huge house, and offered to put us up for however long we needed. Ended up being a little over a week. They had a pool and everything, it was awesome. His daughter, my cousin, we'll call her C, and I always got along well, despite living one province away and not seeing each other often. It was her room I ended up staying in. In addition to her bed there was also a hide a bed couch, which is where I would sleep. I always thought she was pretty. She was nice to look at, and she was a little over a year older than me. Our second day there we all ended up in their pool. And although nothing happened in there, she did rub up against me a few times. Which to a younger guy, was just totally awesome. Most nights the adults would hang out in the backyard drinking and catching up, or they would go out for the evening. One night, after the parents had left, we watched movies in her room. We didn't pay much attention to what was on TV, we talked instead. We talked about my life back home, her life, how school went the previous year, that kind of thing. She also asked me if I had a girlfriend back home. I said I did, I didn't. She also asked if my fake girlfriend and I had done stuff. Don't remember what I said, but it was probably yes. We were sitting on her bed watching the movie, and she laid her head on my shoulder. I didn't realize she had fallen asleep until I had to wake her to let her know the movie was done. I think I may have fallen asleep a little as well. She turned to me as she shut off the TV and looked me in the eyes. So I kissed her. We made out a little, but just kissing. An awkward teenage groping. Nothing happened that night. The next few nights, the same thing happened. Parents would go out, we'd watch a movie, or listen to music, on her bed, and things would progress a little further. During one of our sessions my hand slipped down her pants. She must have liked it, because it wasn't long until the clothes were off. We had sex that night. It was my first time. My parents and I stayed with them for a bit, and things would happen most nights. Unless someone else was in the house, as her door had no locks. After a week and a bit we left to go visit my mother's family. Nothing exciting happened during that part though. Next year was a little different. My aunt, uncle, and cousin, and my mom and dad and I, we all rented out cabins. Each family had their own, but my cousin, and I still, found ways to be alone. The third summer, which ended up being the last time we were all together like that, was back at their house. They put us up for two weeks and I had to stay in her room again. Things were different that time. We both had grown up, she was already out of high school, I was in my last year, and we were different people by then. We still did stuff though, we were both more experienced and wanted to show what we knew. The next year my grandma, dad and uncle's mom, died so the only vacation my dad could afford to take was for the funeral. I hardly saw her as she had moved out and only came around for a couple dinners at her parents place. Nothing happened that trip as it was kind of a depressing time. The following years life got in the way. Work, school, we both ended up getting married to different people of course and had families of our own. She found me on Facebook when I was 26 and by that time I hadn't seen her for almost 7 years. We chatted for a bit, nothing sexual, just two people catching up. She deleted her Facebook profile a year later, and I haven't talked to her since. I'm 34 now. I'm sure at the time we both knew what we were doing was wrong, but sometimes teenage hormones just get in the way. I miss her, but it wasn't like we were in love or anything. It was just something we did when we were together. It never went past piff sex and oral though and she was adopted, so we weren't blood related, so I guess it wasn't that bad. Our parents would flip out if they found out though. One day, my parents, my younger brother, who had Down syndrome, and I went to some Down syndrome house where they take in children with Down syndrome. They didn't explain to me what the trip was for, as they knew I couldn't handle it. My bro was 5, and I was 7 and we were, still are extremely close. While in the house, my parents were talking to the keepers of the house, while my brother and I went to the room with the Down syndrome children. I overheard my mom saying, are you there any schools for children with special needs in this area? Immediately everything clicked, and as expected I couldn't control myself. I was throwing baseball with some chubby Down syndrome child and he threw the basketball to me, and I just held it, looked in his face, and he was smiling. I looked at my brother and saw an expression of unease. He didn't feel comfortable for probably a reason. I got so pissed off. 
I felt like the chubby down syndrome was laughing because of what my mom just said. He was laughing at me and going to take my brother away. I threw the baseball with all strength right in the chubby boy's face. His whole mouth was bleeding as was his nose. Intuitively before the boy even started crying I screamed no no no, my brother's name. And the boy started screaming even louder. He was in shock. My parents came in together with the keepers. I told them it's crazy papa, mama. I told no no he's going to live here and he just threw the ball in this boy's face. My parents apologized and we left the place. In the car they asked my brother why he threw the ball, but my brother just angrily didn't answer, as if he knew what I wanted. And today he is turning 19. He still lives at home, but he has a job, is almost independent, and the joy of all our lives. <laughs> Colon close bracket. I have two stories from college that, if ever found out my parents would surely kill me. Both of these moments could have severely altered my future and ruined my life. These were 4 to 5 years ago. I will share one for now, and the other, if there is any interest as these are very long stories. Towards the end of high school I started using some different pills and this carried into college. Typical stuff like Arxicodone, Xanax, Kilopins, SP. Anyways my junior year in college I had a very high tolerance towards Xanax, and one particular night we were going to a pretty big house party in an area of campus I had never been. I didn't know the people hosting the party, and I found out about it late, so I was actually 9.5 milligrams of Xanax down at this point. If you don't know that is an insane amount of Xanax, and for some people could easily cause you to odd. At this time I was a 6 feet 3 inches 280 pounds male with a high tolerance, so I was still functional. We get to the party and I get about 6 beers deep, and at this point I'm wrecked beyond belief. I go into the bathroom to piss, and being the douchebag I was I looked through the medicine cabinets and drawers of the bathroom. I found a full script of Adderall which I had never taken before, and some other various paraphernalia I'm going to leave out as they are not important to the story. So once again being the douchebag I'm I decide all of this is going home with me. I had brought a backpack with me to transport all of my beers to the party, so I put it on. I went around and told all of my friends I was feeling very sick and needed to get home. I'm never one to not hold my alcohol slash drugs so they know something is wrong. So I head to the bathroom and fill my backpack up and splash water on my face and cough a lot to make myself look sick. We then all headed out and started our walk back to our apartment. Not 4 minutes into our walk we are stopped by the police because it was about 1 to 2 am and we were walking down the street of campus and they wanted to make sure the girls were okay. Note at this point here are 6 of us and of the 6, 2 of us are 21, I'm 20 and the other 3 are 20 as well. The cop asked us if we were all of age and we all said yes. The 2 people who are 21 offer up their licenses really quick and that was enough to appease the cop. If he had eyed all of us, I would have gotten a drinking ticket and potentially had my bag searched. Had I been caught I would have had charges for underage drinking, paraphernalia, a stolen controlled substance, intent to distribute, it was a full script, so a huge amount of Adderall not to mention I had cellophane, and to top it all off I was on school property. This would have probably resulted in a short jail sentence and being expelled from my university. So after all of this we are ecstatic and my friends could not believe what I had done as I'm not typically this kind of person. We go back to our apartment and the girls go to bed, and it is just us four guys left. We start doing mass amounts of Adderall smoking weed and drinking. In total we had I believe 30 to 40 pills of 30 milligram Adderall. Note at this time we had all been up since 9 to 10 am, and it is now 3 am. We continue getting fucked up, smoking cigs, watching Entourage episodes and occasionally playing Super Mash Brothers. All of a sudden my girlfriend wakes up and it is 10 a.m. the next day. We are still partying. Eventually we run out of beers and just keep taking Adderall and doing whatever it is we can find as we are also amped up. None of us had done it before. We were playing with hand sanitizer and fire for a good couple of hours. If you have never done this, while annihilated I definitely recommend it. Eventually it comes down to just me and my one other friend. We are just chilling in his room doing more Adderall and smoking some cigs while he plays on his electric piano. This is where shit got nuts. 
Note it is about 10 p.m. at this point, and we had been awake roughly 36 hours and abusing this Adderall. I started seeing Call of Duty on my friend's TV screen which is turned off. I don't know how or why, but it was the most insane hallucination I have ever had. I then realize that just about anything I start focusing on is absolutely nuts. My buddy starts seeing odd things as well, and we realize that we are hallucinating from the drugs and sleep deprivation. We spent the next 5 to 6 hours just staring at stuff and walking around outside smoking cigs and looking like retards. Of all of the things we saw the craziest was staring at this poster. The best way to describe it was colored warfare. It is so hard to really describe it, but I could see bombs going off and gunshots in the breeze in the treetops. After all of that insaneness my buddy had finally had enough and went to bed. Now he had probably 3 to 4 pills of Adderall to my 10. I tried to go to bed and eventually realized it was never going to happen. I started having an insane panic attack and sweating like crazy. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't calm down. I felt like I was falling and going to die. I have had panic attacks before as I suffer from mental illness but nothing like this. Nothing could calm me down and my girlfriend began to worry. I had been up for over 48 hours and I finally decided to call the school toxicology line. I told them everything I had taken to the T and they advised me to immediately go to the hospital. I knew that I did, that my parents would surely catch me as I was on their insurance. So I tried my best to just deal with it and sleep. At about 10am I finally gave up and had my GF take me to the ER. This was the worst experience of my life. I had to wait almost 3 hours before seeing a doctor all the while feeling like I could die at any moment. I felt like everything was sucking air out of me and I couldn't breathe. They eventually let me sit a room alone so I could try to calm down while repeatedly asking me if I tried to kill myself because of the amount of drugs I had taken. Eventually I was seen by a doctor and he was shocked at the fact I was awake. He told me no matter how much Adderall I took there is no way it could offset that much Xanax. I tried to explain that I had never done Adderall and I had done Xanax multiple times, but he still couldn't understand why I was awake. After running some tests they gave me a shot of something and sent me on my way. I got home and slept for over 24 hours straight and woke up feeling like I was dead. I called my dad and told him I had a stomach problem which he believed and I got 100% away with it all. I have not done a prescription drug since that awful day. I was brought up in a pretty religious home. My family had me in theater, choir, youth group, and all kinds of other extracurricular activities to keep me out of trouble, so they trusted me pretty well. One night, I was about 15, my boyfriend at the time had come over to watch movies. The stipulation was that we could lay in the bed and watch the movie, but the door had to be open. After a while, my mom came in to check on us and everything was fine, so she thanked my boyfriend for being a gentleman and shut the door on her way out. Immediately, as if the door shut had triggered some teenage hormone overload, we started making out and fooling around. He slid his hand up my shirt for a bit, but finally having some privacy, I soon directed his hand to minor thur bits. Yay first, not self-stimulated, orgasm. We never got caught, which was considered a major triumph, and we found ways after that to hook up without my parents knowing. It wasn't until a few months later at my youth's purity ball, yes, we signed pledges and warrings to signify our abstinence for God and marriage, that my dad delivered this humiliating speech. He told the congregation he was proud of the strong lady I had become. That regardless of having a boyfriend, I stood up to teen peer pressure and hormones, and that he witnessed me deflect an attempt at immoral behavior while watching movies with my boyfriend one night. Apparently, the blinds had been open and my bed faced them from in the house. He happened to be walking in from the garage and caught a peek at me removing my boyfriend's hand from my boob. I was mortified. The secret he must never know? The night I got my first orgasm, he thought I deflected my boyfriend from touching my boobs, when in reality I was actually directing him much much further south. TLDR. Dad thought I was sitting on the bench for God when I was really rounding second with David. Mine's kind of long. My dad was always a heavy drinker. Growing up, it was wasn't uncommon for him to get so drunk he'd fall down. 
In fact he was banned from several bars for being such an unmanageable drunk. It's not that he would cause trouble or fights. Depp cite him being a pretty big and intimidating looking guy. He was actually a really nice guy and likable when he was drinking. He was just annoying and a liability when he'd get so drunk he'd start falling down, getting hurt, breaking things, and being a burden to the other patrons. So because of this, he drank at home a lot. He would drink large amounts of whiskey and on some nights he'd wind up falling down when stumbling to the bathroom or the fridge. This was a regular occurrence in my childhood and over the years and it kind of became commonplace. I'd usually help him up if I could and other times I'd let him lie there and just try to make him comfortable let him pass out and leave him to it. My mom would usually be in bed and not hear him fall but I'd always hear it. Regardless of how or where he fell, the sound was almost always the same. Well one night, when I was staying at home on Christmas break from college, I was laying in bed and I heard that sound. He had fallen. It was around 2.45am. I got up to check on him per usual and he was lying next to the table on the floor. I went over to help him up. He grunted a little bit and wasn't helping me help him up at all. He was unusually loose and limp, wasn't speaking coherently and not attempting to help me at all. I figured it was because he was drunker than usual. Since I wasn't going to be able to get him back in his chair or even to his feet, I figured I'd make him comfortable and leave him there. So I went over my usual routine. Checked his head to make sure he wasn't bleeding or badly injured. Hide his whiskey bottle so he wouldn't get up and drink more and look to make sure his glasses weren't broken. Clean them and put them on the table. Turn him on his side just in case he vomited. Surprisingly, he rarely puked. When I took his glasses off he had a strained look on his face and an expression that seemed to stare right through me. I usually ask if he's okay and I usually get a grumbled yeah or something similar. But all I got this time was a long strained grunt. Again, I figured he was just super drunk and didn't think much of it. I turned off the TV and went to bed. I woke up 3 hours later to my mom frantically banging on my door. She sounded panicked and blurted out I think your dad's dead. I sprinted into the kitchen and found him laying in the exact same spot I had left him. His body was cold to the touch. He wasn't breathing. He had died. When the coroner finally arrived, he estimated the time of death to be around 3 or 4 am. Later we learned the death was actually a heart attack. When I look back, I wonder if the small unusual behaviors I noticed but didn't really pay attention were actually side effects of him having a heart attack. His behavior was different than usual and he was heavily intoxicated, but I can't help but wondering if my dad was dying right in front of me without me noticing. At the time I blamed myself for leaving him there and not investigating further. He died right where I left him. I felt terrible and I carried that guilt for a long time. I now know it's not my fault, but I still feel guilty from time to time. On the day dad died, mom asked me if I had heard him fall that night. My initial guilt and shame lead me to lie and tell her no, I must have slept through it, I feared if I told her all of this she'd blame me. Of course, I know she wouldn't blame me, but I'm still not sure about some of my family on my dad's side. I know for sure some of them would be disgusted I left him on the floor. Yeah, it sounds fucked up, but that's just how it was growing up in my house. I've never told a soul about this and never planned to, except Reddit I guess, because I'm afraid of people will think of me as the pose who let his dad die. TLDR, drunk dad fell, I left him on the floor and he died. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe the channel.